So let's begin by looking at negligence, which makes up a big part of the law of tort. Negligence, as I studied it, I broke it apart into four main sections. Duty of care, breach, causation, and remoteness. So we'll begin by going through my spider graph, which is also available as a PDF for you to download and have a look at, along with the case summaries and the quiz at the end of this particular lesson. Now, I urge you, download the PDF, have a look at it, follow along as I am reading out what the sections are, then you'll get a better understanding of it before you have a look at it. But mind you, it's always advisable to actually make your own spider graph or mind map. This is just a reference. It works if you're the one who actually writes and draws whatever that you need to remember those particular sections. And all of these lessons, this as well as any other uh, tutorial that I'm doing here, is actually a mechanism by which to put everything in context. So it's not a substitute for thorough learning and knowledge. It'll just put everything into a bigger scheme of things, a big picture. So at the end of the day, when you go for an examination, you have the best idea possible on how exactly to approach each and every question. So you'll have a mental map of it. Cool. So let's begin with the duty of care. Duty of care is actually one of the most interesting areas in negligence in um, tort itself. So as of now, contemporarily, the test is by Caparo and Dickman. It's available in the case summaries. Have a look at it. The test is three parts. Foreseeability, proximity, and just and reasonableness. Each part has a particular case that goes along with it. For instance, foreseeability, you can look at Langley and Dre. Proximity, Watson versus British Boxing. And just and reasonableness, you can have a look at McFarlane and Tayside Health. Whereas this goes to sort of showcase the contemporary uh, viewpoint, Potts J, as in Justice Potts, in B versus Islington Health, concluded that personal injury still has the test stated in Donahue and Stevenson, the seminal case of the decomposed snail in the ginger beer bottle. Duty of care also means we have to look at psychiatric injury, which means people who have not suffered or was never in a danger of suffering physical harm, but have suffered psychiatric injury or some psychiatric harm due to something they saw, something they heard of even. So the definition here is there is no physical uh, harm, but only mental. And the definition in psychiatric injury itself was defined in White versus Chief Constable of South Yorkshire. There are several classes of people that uh, could sustain or court defines as can sustain uh, psychiatric injury. One is the unwitting agent, as seen in Hunter versus British Coal. Then you have bystanders who most of the time, or generally, are not allowed to claim in tort for a psychiatric injury, such as Bohill versus Young. Employees also can be a class of people who suffer psychiatric injury, much like the unwitting agent in Hunter versus British Coal, but it's looked at more or less under employer's liability. You have the very defined state of affairs in rescuers, where you have normal rescuers, as in people who approach a scene of an accident, good Samaritans. And most of the time, they are allowed or they are afforded a claim purely due to public policy, such as in Chadwick versus British Railways. Whereas professionals, in the same regard, are not afforded that same luxury, primarily because they accept the responsibility when they take on the job at hand. A controversial area in psychiatric injury is friends and relatives, specifically the famous case of Alcock versus Chief Constable of South Yorkshire, as well as McLaughlin versus O'Brien. These were instances where loved ones had suffered injury, but ironically, they had not seen or witnessed the accident firsthand. They had either, in the case of Alcock, seen it in the, on the TV, or in the case of McLaughlin, soon after the accident. So in the case of McLaughlin, it was quite clear-cut in the sense that on appeal, she was provided a remedy or she was, she was given her claim because she had seen uh, the victims soon after the accident before they were dressed up. Besides the classes themselves, we have to consider what situations can be considered as invoking psychiatric injury. For instance, in North Glamorgan and Walters, 
it can be caused by series of events as stated by the court as in it need not be one particular instance it can be several instances consecutively that lead to psychiatric injury but for instance in Sion versus Hampstead Health court held that it cannot be a slow death we have to also look at the instances where unlike actual actions being done inactions causing or rather leading to liability in tort so for instance the very basic rule the rule of thumb here is that where there is no duty there need not be any liability however there are exceptions to this a very interesting case in this regard is uh, Barrett versus the Ministry of Defense where it was held that if you voluntarily undertake responsibility there would be a duty owed if breached would cause you to be liable in a particular tort another instance is quite interestingly in the case of uh, fire services where if you positively worsen the situation by not acting that also can become liable in your regard now the case of capital and counties versus hampshire county council is a very good example for this have a look at it in the case summaries it's a it's it's an example to showcase where uh, public authorities were held liable and we'll look at why that is important a little bit later besides the uh, physical injury the psychiatric injury another crucial element within uh, duty of care within the duty of care is where damage is caused due to economic loss once again if there is a voluntary undertaking of responsibility the defendant would be liable as held in dean versus elaine and watts what this states or what this stipulates is where in general there might not be a liability but if there is voluntarily in the premise of two or more parties responsibility is undertaken as in let me handle this for instance the defendant will be liable one of the famous cases and now sort of uh, looked after by the misrepresentation act of 1967 is headley headley and heller headley burn and heller rather the economic loss caused here was by a negligent misstatement however there was no liability imposed because there were extenuating circumstances another rule of thumb as held by court is where there was a duty established and breached and finally the defendant was held liable that liability cannot extend for a claim for future profit it can only be for whatever profit that you have lost up to now or whatever whatever monetary damages which are tangible and an interesting case in this regard is spartan steel and martin have a look at that as well it's a case where there was a, an electrical failure in which case the entire factory had to shut down but the court held that it was unreasonable for uh, the claimants to ask for compensation or for ask for damages for future profit which might not be which might not tangibly be possible to define reliance on the defendant also imposes liability on the defendant now this is very crucial when it comes to professions or professionals rather now we've looked at a lot of um, instances where duty has been established and irrespective of the person that it's been imposed upon except for as i mentioned earlier in shadwick it has been held either liable or not liable based on the reasonable reasonableness of the situation on a case by case basis however one anomaly in this regard is where special groups are involved and what i mean by special groups are people who are either local authorities as in the case of x versus bcc emergency services such as as we looked at earlier capital and counties versus hampshire county council ambulance services like kent and griffiths police such as rigby uh, and chief constable of northamptonshire northamptonshire but even in this what court looks at is the public policy quotient and what that means is whether it is reasonable to hold a public authority a local authority or emergency services ambulance or any other services which are essential uh, to a community liable for something which might be trivial number 1 or might have benefited a greater group of people yet hindered this one individual now it's a very um, it's a very controversial area in tort law as well as in whereas 
there might be a public authority which is held liable in one occasion and not in another. So have a look at each, each of these cases, specifically cases such as Rigby and Chief Constable of uh, Northamptonshire, uh, Capital and Counties and Ham, uh, Hampshire County Council, as we looked at earlier, version in the situation in the case of omissions, and X and BCC, uh, or Bedfordshire County Council, uh, in the case of a local authority.